Chris Sacker, Micro VC, whatever that means, and uh, political activist. You were an early Obama guy, Chris. You, you were active in the campaign. You advised him. What did you learn about uh, politics in terms of your involvement with the Obama campaign? Yeah, I, th I think one of the key insights the Obama campaign had right away um, was actually drawn from Google culture. I mean, the president writes in his books about how early visits to, to meet Larry Sergey and, and Eric Schmidt really influenced how he felt about and, and, and how he thought about organization building. And so when, you, when I got to the campaign, one of the things I realized right away was how much responsibility that campaign had pushed down through the organization to traditionally lower levels. I mean, I don't know if you went to the campaign site, but from the front page of that site, you were four clicks away from being able to make phone calls on behalf of the campaign. So no real prior training necessary, no real vetting. You could just be out there advocating sincerely from the bottom of your heart about why you like this candidate best. That's amazing to show that amount of faith and trust in early and in, in kind of like traditionally you know, non-political operators was really fascinating. And so as I went to field offices, I would find them being run by everyone from 19 year olds to retirees, people who weren't part of the traditional political machinery, but had been shown this trust, this faith and this responsibility early on. And you know what's fun is they rose to that expectation. And so in these organizations, I would see people whose resumes would have never gotten them in the door in a traditional Washington DC outfit, and yet were exceeding every expectation you could ever have of them. So the campaign like Twitter was undefined. It was undefined. I mean, there was certainly guidance from the top. Um, the guys like David Pluff, et cetera, they knew messaging. They knew the vulnerabilities of the Republican Party, and they knew and understood what the frustration was with the existing approach in politics and in Washington. And they seized upon that, not in a sensationalist way, but in an empowering way. And I think what we see with the Tea Party right now is a teasing, exploitative, like, look, these people are all fired up, so let's just poke them in their vulnerable spots and, and provoke their anger. And I think what we saw in the Obama campaign was instead like, hey, if you have a problem with the way things are being done, then you have a responsibility to be part of a solution. And that's what was so cool. And that's what was so that where the, the campaign became a movement rather than just a campaign. All of these people contributing. And it was basically like, hey, look, we're going to give you responsibility until you give us a reason to take it away. And so many people did so many great things as a result. I think they really owed the campaign to those folks. So the campaign became a movement, and then, of course, that movement came to power. What have you learned in the two years since Obama came to power about politics and movements and uh, political leaders who perhaps come to power on the back of undefined popular uh, unrest? Yeah, well, one of the things I was frustrated by is that the administration didn't really, didn't fully embrace all of the people who got it elected in its new administration. And so, they put together, for instance, a panel of economic advisors. And that panel of economic advisors comprised mostly of successful, wealthy executives, uh, a couple of local politicians like mayors. But as I looked around that room, I didn't see anybody who regularly came into contact with poor people. I didn't see anybody in that room who rented their apartment. I didn't see anyone who was struggling to pay back their student loans. I didn't see anyone who was in danger of losing their job. And so those were the voices that I think made the Obama campaign movement so strong. And I was a little disheartened to not see more of those voices included in DC as they put together the teams to go ahead and manage the, the actual administration. And so I feel like that's one lesson is to, is to continue to include that diversity of opinions, of, ex of experiences and insights that I think inform the best decisions possible. How can Obama learn? I think he's had to learn on the job in real time. I mean, I think he is up against a formidable and scary force right now. I think. What we see happen on Fox News and the way they have stoked the flames of this, what I consider to be a racist and fear-mongering movement you know, within the Tea Party and in the fringe of the Republican Party, I think he has had to learn that, you know what, bipartisanship, as great as it sounds, is probably not an option right now. They're going to filibuster anything he does. And so I think he's had to change tack from trying to be a collaborative, engaging leader to just saying, we got to get some stuff done. 10 seconds. Can Obama be a successful president? I think he's on his way. I think we had a rocky start, but I think he has been learning on the, along the way. And nothing made me happier and gave me more optimism than seeing him in that unbridled Q&A with the Republicans on their offsite. I think he really showed that he's got what it's going to take to turn the next two years.